everybody this is Linda with bedtime Bible chat well we're in a new verse in Proverbs 12 we're taking one verse and that's verse 2 and Proverbs is full of this particular lesson and as I've said before whenever the Lord gives us one lesson over and over again it's because it's important well, let's get over there and find out what's important to him then. <laughs> Proverbs 12, verse 2. A good man obtaineth favor of the Lord, but a man of wicked devices will be condemned. <laughs> well, <clears throat> let's get some corresponding verses. When we go to John fourteen fifteen. If ye love me, keep my commandments. Now, as we see here, a good man obtained the favor of the Lord. A good man is a righteous man who keeps the commandments of God, who lives his life the way God wants him to. But a man of wicked devices, he is condemned. And let's see what the corresponding verses for that is Colossians 3, 24 and 25. Knowing that of the Lord, ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done, and there is no respect of persons. In other words, whatever you've done wrong, you've got the equal punishment for it. And it doesn't matter if you're a king, a queen, a president. Doesn't matter who you are. You're still going to get your punishment. Proverbs 10, 2 through 4. Treasures of wickedness profit nothing, but righteousness delivereth from death. The Lord will not suffer the soul of the righteous to famish, but he casteth away the substance of the wicked. He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent maketh rich. In other words, you that have won your riches in the wicked way don't think because you've gotten by with it all your life and you're a hundred years old now that you slid by and nothing was going to happen to you oh trust me your day is very short shortly coming and um you're going to lose all your riches and you're going to gain hell proverbs 10 7 the memory of the just is blessed but the name of the wicked shall rot. <laughs> oh, I like that one. All right, let's, let's talk about this now. We've seen all of this uh, before in Proverbs, and this won't be our last time seeing it. But, you know, the, the more wicked this world gets, which is every day it gets more and more wicked, uh, we can see what Proverbs is teaching us and why God thinks it's so important. Because the wicked is overtaking the world now. And there's so few righteous. Uh, we need to try to reach the wicked, but if you ask my humble opinion, the higher up they are, the more they're turned over to the reprobate mind and you can't reach them. You might be able to reach some in the lower levels like your neighbor or somebody like that. But you're not going to reach those big guys. They're unreachable if they're even really still human. Um, I know that... I'm trying to decide whether to say this or not. <laughs> Um, the people that are at the top, there are some who aren't people. That's true. Oh, and have you noticed, 
today the news is full of um, proof that the government is hiding extraterrestrials, hiding their spaceship from us. They have one. They're getting ready for the rapture, too. Getting ready to explain away where we went. They're not going to get by with it. They're wicked. They are going to get their just desserts. But all of this is playing into God's plan for the tribulation to start. But it can't start until he that is restraineth is taken away. That doesn't mean he's going to totally leave the earth. The Holy Spirit is in the church. But when the church is taken out, the Holy Spirit might land on an individual, a few individuals, but there won't be a collective like the church anymore. So what we got to do as righteous people is our mandate to spread the gospel. You know, if you, if you are one of God's people, you have to do as he commanded, and we have to spread the gospel. But nowadays is dangerous, as you've seen in the news. I don't know if you saw it or not, but uh, there was this gay pride thing going on, parade or something, and, and some Christians were uh, stopped. When they were on their way somewhere else, they stopped and, and got out of their car and, and was praying. And one of them is a preacher, so he started preaching. They got arrested. And remember, they're taking the Bible out of the school library because it has vulgarity and, and um, violence in it. But they let drag queens come into the schools and show everything. There, there are uh, accounts of these gay parades. Oh my gosh, it's a pure filth. Nakedness. Um, there's this uh, drag queen story hour for the entire family. And he's showing it all. This other guy, he strips down to nothing, literally just his birthday suit, showing everything to the audience, including children. That's okay. You can't stop that. That's against the law. But take that Bible out of the schools. We don't want no part of that. This is wickedness that will be dealt with in God's timing. What we're seeing today is just... Ten years ago, I would have never guessed in a million years that I would be living in today's world. Never would have guessed it. This is the wickedness that these scriptures are talking about that's going to be dealt with in the, in the degree uh, of their sin. And didn't Jesus say that if you cause one of these little ones to go astray, or you harm one of these little ones, it's better for you to have a millstone wrapped around your neck and cast into the deepest part of the sea. These people that are ruining our children, making them think that they weren't born their biological gender, and then they go and they disfigure themselves through the assistance of the medical profession who is out there to take care of everybody. So, don't think that they're going to get by with it. They're not. Our duty is to spread the gospel. Our duty is to pray for these people. There may be some that's reachable. It's up to the good Lord. It's up to the Holy Spirit. We don't know who they are, so we got to pray for them. What is happening in this world today is off the charts, 
And every day I read and get more and more information about how much further off the charts it is. The only thing you can do is pray for them. But we got to keep in mind that all of this is supposed to happen. If you read your Bible, you'll tell you that this is going to happen in the end times. Hello, we're in the end times. <laughs> so, unlike, unlike me and getting upset, there's no use in that, but I do it anyway. We have to say, all right, this proves that we're going home soon. I say that too, but I still get upset at my at the children. I just can't stand it when somebody messes with my children. The children that they're a blessing from God, at least most of them are. <laughs> There's some that's got demons in them, and I'm telling you. <laughs> but as a righteous person, whenever we wake up in the mornings, the first thing you need to do is pray for God to protect you through the day and just keep him in mind throughout the day. If he is on your mind constantly, demons can't attack you. They're scared of Jesus. So keep him in your mind all the time. Well, about all I can do with that one, and we've been over this topic so many times, and we, I'm sure we're going to go through it again. Tomorrow, I think, is another. I was going to put it in with this one, but there was a little twist different that I might be able to go on. So Now, let's don't forget now. Communing with the Lord sure helps a lot in these evil times. It helps us get through the stress. helps us get through worry. It helps us get through pain. It helps us get through attacks. Communion with the Lord is the um, a cure-all. I'm not kidding you. When I, like I said before, when I first started saying this back in 2014, it was just something I was saying. I didn't think about it because it was something I did. I just thought this would help y'all. But you know what? It is so true. And, and it has really come to pass that it will give you that peace beyond all understanding. So during these unbelievable days and it's only going to get worse what i'm reading more and more about is just you know in 2024 who will be the president of the world 2024 they're using the um excuse of protecting the health of the world so they're going to Make everybody take the passport, and in order to get the passport, you got to have all your vaccinations. They even hinted around that, and they didn't say they're going to do it, but Austria, Austria segregated the unvaccinated from the rest of the population. They didn't say in what means they segregated them, and I'm trying to remember, but I can't remember it. I know that was reported on, but I can't remember it. So all of the all of the world is going to be under the rule of who. And if you don't have the proper vaccinations and thus your passport, you're not going to be able to do nothing. You're not going to be able to go nowhere. You're not going to be able to travel. You're not going to be able to leave your home. It's it's pretty bad. So 2024. And you can thank Biden for that. He signed on to it. Uh, now, I'm not a Trump fan, but Trump didn't want any part of the who. So uh, Biden signed up for it. So he gave our sovereignty over to... Uh, who? 
So things are going to get bad. Uh, they're taking away our ability to farm and growing meat. Things are coming down the pike that only communing with the Lord is going to help you get through it. Okay, guys, there you have it. I will see you hopefully tomorrow on Bedtime Bible Chat. If the Lord's willing, bye-bye.